When we had last left Harrier Dubois, he and Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi had decided to forge the signatures that Everard Clare needed for his Youth Center expansion. This was due to the sh plain and simple fact that construction would be ongoing for many, many months and would likely drive many of the residents of the fishing village out from their homes. Something that Everard Clare wanted? It was unclear, but it was definitely something that Harry didn't want. However, they also swung by and checked in on Joyce following their investigation into the Lady Lorry driver's Lorry cabin, where she finally did divulge her secret information. And that secret corporate information was pretty fucking hot as well. <laughs> she revealed that she was there alongside of another group that Wild Pines had hired, one that had perhaps gone rogue, one that had already seen one of their members die. Yes, the Hanged Man. It was none other than the PMC Krennel, who were now in Martinez, and it seemed as though they were loose on their trigger fingers, ready to turn all of Martinez, all of Ravishol, perhaps, into a bloodbath. And it would take some stunning detective work to perhaps halt it in its tracks. This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Let's also head over and uh, put this little unit inside the mailbox, right? I think that's a good one, huh? Okay, let's go on over here. What I wonder is, should we actually kick this hornet's nest and check in with this scab leader? I don't know. <laughs> it's a little... <laughs> Given all of the, the pretext that we have about everything going on with that, it's a little intimidating, a little scary to just walk up, right? Maybe we speak with Titus first, right? Good lord. Let's see, go over here. You know, at the very beginning of this, I can't remember if I mentioned it last time, but someone wrote in when I said, oh my god, Kuno is just like absolutely horrible. And someone wrote in saying that um, the game has a way of humanizing and making characters endearing to you that at first glance are very abrasive, very shitty, <laughs> right? And that has for the most part, really held true, right? And it's kind of amazing, right? Even, like, characters that are on a smaller scope have been made very endearing and human to us and all of that. Like we just said last time, for sure. Uh, the instance with Titus Hardy. At first, he was, like, very abrasive and aggressive, and now, I kind of like him. He's kind of taken on this, like, asshole with a heart of gold, right? Like, he's, he's kind of on the right side of a lot of things, although his methods are, like, <laughs> potentially fucked up sometimes. I don't know. But he's, he's got his heart in the right place, right? I do enjoy Titus Hardy. Good lord. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Mailbox. Forge signatures. Let's do it. This is it, isn't it? Yes. Mail collection box. I was worried that this was actually a, uh, what do you call it, box? A... Newspaper box. Good lord. I haven't seen any of those in real life in forever. Alright. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. I knew we'd get to use this mailbox for something. Drop the white envelope into the mailbox. Let's say something. I knew we'd get to use this. Yes. For sending mail. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> drop the, the white envelope into the mailbox. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. Perception hearing. Medium success. About a week's worth of mail has collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Alright, let's go back to Everard. The lieutenant turns towards the industrial harbor. If we don't mention anything to him, he won't know before it's too late. Good mail delivery box. Oh, The box seems happy. Leave. Okay, 
I think we should also speak to Everard before we speak to the scab leader, right? I'm very worried about this, I guess I'll say. I'm very worried about it. So we'll speak to Titus and then we'll speak to Everard, right? Hmm. I wonder if Titus will have any reactivity for us having resolved the whole Clausia situation. Right? I'm not sure. Let's see. Hey. The copper NATO is back. What do you want? He smirks. Oh, he gave us he gave us a little epithet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not one that I appreciate, but you know what? It's the thought that counts. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Wow, we can go over a bunch of things. Huh. Do I want to do this though? I feel like this will hurt our friendship some. Right? Let's see, I'm gonna take off for now. Let's just quick save, because my intent is not to hurt our friendship. We'll see where this goes, though. The Copper NATO is back. What do you want? Guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell you have. He leans back, unruffled. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in Precinct 41 kilos. We'll do that. In the meantime, he points south. Did you know there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients from for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? We know Ruby was the driver. We know that's your affiliation with her. He taps his notebook. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? You're right. There is no local drug trade, except you, point at Titus. No, do the honor, you've earned it, nod at the lieutenant. Forget it, I knew they'd never own up to it, back off. No, sure, go ahead, lieutenant. Thank you. He turns to face the man. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. He rubs his jaw, smiling. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runts on the street. Yeah, man, theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. It would need good, trustworthy people to run- to take their place, of course. Hardy men who run such a monopoly. He grins. For the good of the community, of course. Hmm. That's such an interesting take on the situation, you know? That they figured they can't control the drug situation. So, in a sense, they have, like... Within their own community, right? Like, on a larger purview, this isn't true. But within their own community, they have legalized drug trade, right? This is disgusting. You're admitting to profiting off of poisoning your own people. Good idea. People are always going to do drugs. At least this way you have some control over it. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. I know for a fact there's still plenty of drugs out there. There's still plenty of drugs out there. In fact, I have some in my bloodstream right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> some of these are some good choices here. I, like, at first I was like, ooh, I'm kind of torn between one and two. But then this here. In fact, I have some in my bloodstream right now. <laughs> And I literally do right this second. I've got speed active. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have to go with that. There's plenty, there's still plenty of drugs out there. In fact, I have some in my bloodstream right now. Enjoy your shitty ride, junkie cop. We still have it under control. All you're doing is contributing to the local economy. It's just a little hitch. Yeah, there's always going to be little sprouts. People find a way to make coin, but that's the little picture. Hardy boys are taking care of the big picture. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is, how dare you go fuck yourself? And what about this ruby? 
Is she the eighth Hardy who runs this thing for you? God, I sound like, um... <laughs> What's his name? Fucking William Riker. God, what's his fucking name? Jonathan Frakes in uh, his mystery show. And what about the man with the clown tattoo? Have you ever seen a man so tall that he couldn't fit through his front door? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, let's see. And what about this Ruby? Is she the eighth Hardy who runs this thing for you? Ah, oh, 30 XP. Task complete. Confront Hardy Boys about drug trade. You sure do love long walks down Theory Town, through Theory Town, don't you? The big guy asks, straightening his cap. Well, I'm thirsty now. Thirsty for beer. Got any less theoretical questions, cop? Authority easy success. He doesn't let it show, but must be a little impressed. You put a lot of things together. Fast. Hmm. All right, let's run through the rest of this. I talked to Joyce, the Merc you hanged. His friends are coming for you. Yeah? He doesn't seem worried. By friends, you mean his squad mates from Krennel. Wouldn't want to beat up his grandma. There's snickering in the room. Some of the men put their beers down. Right, of course, they would be full of bravado, right? They don't give a shit. They think that they could take him and... Maybe the numbers would pan out that way, right? Wasn't that one of the things that Joyce said? That the numbers are in the Hardy Boys' favor, but they're severely outgunned. Okay, continue. Half-Light, easy success. Nervous snickering. There's a rush of adrenaline present. Empathy, formidable success. Ooh, formidable. Titus did his best, but his men are a bit unsettled. Yeah, they are forming some kind of tribunal, and they're coming for you. This is what happens if you take the law in your own hands. Other people start doing it too. That's a good point. Let them come, Blondie yells across the cafeteria. The Hardy Boys are right fucking here. You heard the man right here, he points to the ground. We're armed. We got the whole district behind us. And Glenn, Glenn is fucking crazy. Yeah, a well-oiled murder machine. He punches Blondie on the shoulder. Physical instrument, easy success. The mood is on the rise. They're feeling confident, ready to punch out the whole Merc platoon. This Krennel is bad news. You know that, right? The mercenaries are armed with automatic weapons. Joyce said they've gone rogue. Nobody is controlling them. Okay, conclude with a shrug. I think we can exhaust all this. Thank goodness. I'd love to hear their takes on all of these. This Krennel is bad news. You know that, right? Pah! A spray of beer. So are the local gangs, the fucking Barmy Army. And the Madre scum. You been out there, seen any around? Yeah, where are they now, huh? He points south. Sent back to Madre in an airtight cargo crate. These people are trained military professionals. Special forces, as you said. They're not a gang or a barmy army. No, they're not. They're uncoordinated and drunk. Don't forget, we're listening in on their communications. Their shit is way apart. Oh, right. Of course. That was the... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, remember? They have the radio tapping shit going on. Right, yeah. That's so good that, they, that you include that. So they knew. Hmm. They knew about this then from the get-go. Okay. The mercenaries are armed with automatic weapons. We got weapons of our own. He cracks open his vest to give you a glimpse of his holster. We got Istra 50s, Zelligers, Glenn's got a knock cannon at home. Will they pierce ceramic armor? Well, if Glenn has a knock cannon at home, I guess you'll be all right. <laughs> Will they pierce ceramic armor? I guess we're gonna see, aren't we? Rhetoric, medium success. That 
was an unsure phrasing. See what? That they don't? For your sake, I hope you're right. Let's keep digging into this. See what? That they don't? Yeah, like you've been up against ceramic armor. He takes a sip of beer to bide his time, then tries to get the last word in. You haven't even seen the whole suit, right? I've been, I've seen the whole fucking thing, and it didn't make him immortal. Joyce said they've gone rogue. Nobody is controlling them. Big fucking surprise, he mutters. They hire psycho scum, arm them to the teeth and let them loose in the city. What do you think is going to happen? Half-Light, medium success. He's really prepped himself up for this. He has to, to keep the fear in check. Good lord. Man, is fucking Titus gonna fucking die? Jesus Christ. Alright. Okay, conclude with a shrug. What do you mean, okay? He jerks forward a bit. I mean, okay, they're going to wipe you the fuck out, Titus. I mean, okay, you got this. You got the numbers. I mean, okay, I'll be on your side when they come. I mean, okay, you got one more gun on your side. Once I find mine, I lost it. I mean, okay, I guess I'll be gunning you down right alongside them. Fuck them. Hmm. Oh, how do we want to go with this? Do we want to... We're giving, given an option here to pick a side to what degree, or we can choose to not pick a side. I'm much more inclined to pick a side here. Even if it's the losing side. I mean, look at me. I'm <laughs> My character, I ran with the communist cop. <laughs> of course, I, I'm fine with the losing side. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Huh. Let's go with this. Maybe this will ply him to re relinquish more info about my gun. I mean, okay, you got one more gun on your side. Once I find mine, I lost it. We don't need you or your lost gun. We all have our guns. He almost splashes his beer at you. We'll just use those if it's okay with you. Lost gun or not, you're not, you're going to need help. The lieutenant looks Titus in the eye. We're offering it. Okay, I accept the offer. The man cracks his shoulder. But I'll believe it when I see it. Empathy. Easy success. He appreciates it, but can only accept it conditionally. Good lord, we're gonna fucking have a showdown with some fucking Pinkertons, huh? Alright. I want to go over a few things regarding Ruby's disappearance again. Yeah, what? Do you know what she's doing with Ulan frequencies? What now? I have no idea. He looks around. Boys! She said she's building a... His voice is very quiet. A pale emitter. Holy shit. Is that possible? Who the fuck is Ru- How is- Is Ruby capable of this? What? We were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing Ulan frequencies in a pale something. I don't know more. There you have it. Pale something. Titus puts an end to it. Inland Empire medium success. It feels like you'll get to know soon enough. Thanks for the review, Titus. He sighs heavily. Anything else you want, cop? Is that possible? A pale emitter? How could you even emit it from anything? Unless there's a two millimeter hole in the world that's already got a little bit in there. And you're just and you just want to rip it open a bit more and let more out. Mmm. But why? What? What's her motive for doing that? Huh. I've no idea. And is it even possible? Because how could... If it dematerializes everything around it... I mean, I guess you would have to use... 
you would theoretically, if that two millimeter hole is the pail, she wants to make it bigger. Why right there? What does that solve? It's not like she's attacking like Wild Pines headquarters or something, right? It's going to show up right there on the coast. And that's theoretically assuming she could even do it. I don't know. There's too many loose ends and too many theoreticals. We've taken a stroll down theory town, as Titus said. All right, I'm going to take off now. Fascinating shit, though. All right. Let's see. Still not uh, late enough to sing karaoke, though, huh? Let's see. We're shy about two hours. Okay. I think we go speak to Everard now, right? Check in with Everard, and then we can check in with the scab leader. Let's do a quick save. Maybe Everard will point me in the direction of my gun, right? I don't fucking know. Oh, look, an int orb. Three T's! How idiomatic. Three T's. Three T's? Of what? Oh, Freet. Gotcha. Okay. Let's head on back to Everard. Let's see, go through here. One of the only shames about getting to Everard is that he's so fucking, like, way out here and through a couple of load screens, huh? Three, in fact, right? One to get through this. One to get inside this interior. One to get back out. And then one to get inside of his crate. His fun crate. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Over here. Good. Alright. Up and around. We can't do anything with this now, can we? Now that we know about the fun crate? Nah. Alright, leave. Nothing new. Still no dice on this either, right? Let's see. Nope. Okay, nothing. Let's head on back up. Along the crates and everything. Here we go. Good. And back in here. Alright. Very nice. Okay. So, what information did Everard even promise us for doing this? I don't even remember. Is it just information on our gun? Maybe? Alright. Let's see. Hey, Everard. Mr. Dubois. Every worker, member of the board, how can I help you today? He smiles merrily. It's done. I mailed the signatures you asked me to mail. The golden boy returns once more. Wonderful, simply wonderful, Harry. He claps his hands together like a child who's just been offered cotton candy. Of course, I already knew this. Task complete. Get two signatures for Everard. 70 XP. Level up. Ooh. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a future and proven to be a true man of the left. I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. He nods to the lieutenant, smiling broadly. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun. Nothing is off the table. Horrific necktie. Oh, Breton, you played the old man like a three-string banjo. He has no idea. The signatures I got. I know you plan to force them out with the construction noise. Ooh. Should we save that for last? Let's save that for last. Let's actually start from the bottom and go up. Can I get my gun now? Harry... I've got to be honest with you. He turns solemn. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Fine, where is it? An old woman has it. And let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so watch out. Logic, trivial success. This must be the woman who 
bought the gun from Roy, the one he described as terrifying. A terrifying old woman. We don't know a terrifying old woman, do we? I don't think we know a terrifying old woman. Hmm. All of the old women that we've known have been, like, kind or irritated at us. <laughs> it's Lena. <laughs> Good job. Good God, could you imagine? Lena fucking bought it. She's ready to find the fucking phasmid and pop its ass. <laughs> she came in, her expression completely changed. She was ready to kill. <laughs> so the gun's still with the woman who bought it from Roy. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. He smiles, shakes his head in wonderment. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that. Wild. Anyway. Suggestion easy success. Union boys are going to help you fix it, he winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Oh, no. Is it the sweeper woman? The coughing sweeper woman? <gasps> no. Wasn't she, like, suicidal or something? Oh, God. What was her whole ordeal? Was she suicidal? I can't remember. Oh, my God. She was, like, in a really bad state, though. What the fuck? It's the old lady who sweeps. Right? Right? Oh my god, okay, continue. Half-Light, easy success. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. She was waving it around at people. As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details, he smiles. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. Empathy, medium success. It sounds like a very disturbed and desperate individual. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know any more. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. What? Inland Empire, easy success. There it is again. The pigs. Like Roy said. Not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. A smile flickers in the corner of his mouth. <laughs> Esprit de corps, easy success. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. Can you set up a meeting? New task. Confront the pigs and get your gun back. I already have. He holds out his index finger. Tonight, starting 2200 near the old fish market on the coast. The one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, he claps his hands. Back to the fun stuff. Inland Empire, trivial success. She will be there from 2200 till 200. More fun stuff. He looks at you. It seems like we already have fun stuff to do. Did you order the hanged man killed? I mean, we already know the truth to this, right? A little sequence breaking here. Maybe he'll even acknowledge it. Let's see. Order it. You know, my men didn't kill him. They told you it was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had to do it myself, and I'm too fat for that. Why are you so fat? What do you gain from him being dead? Okay, another question. What do you gain from him being dead? Why, a war, of course. And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuraki. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. They're trained military people. Aren't you afraid for your men? 
Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to one. And that's just Martinez. With all the unions in Ravishall, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. How's this connected to the strike? Harry, there is no strike, only war, class war, or in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait, he pauses to rub his chin. Is that something you still pay them? Is that, is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. 5 XP. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, the big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. Perception hearing medium success. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gomon go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in the here. That woman can't tell her tits from her asshole. She has no chance. What? Right, I totally forgot that he was, like, swearing and screaming and calling someone, like, a fucking midget or something. What? Tits from her asshole. It's a local saying. <laughs> Rhetoric medium success. Actually, no, it's not. Why are you telling me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. Hmm. I mean, I'm kind of down like if push must come to shove... I'm definitely on his side, right? Case in point, we sided with Titus. Right? But I don't... I don't know if I believe that Everard Claire is in it for the reasons that he says he is, right? Like I said, I feel like... I feel like the Hardy Boys are more in it... For the reasons that Everard is saying, right? Especially given the shit that we found with the, the loophole in the contract and all that, right? Everard seems totally skeezy. I don't know. There's something not right about him. All right, continue. Ooh, shit, we got a lot of stuff unlocked here. Okay. He looks at the swordfish clock and nods. It's already happening. Who killed the hanged man? How many of the how many of you guys are there in the union? How are you going to fund your new independent harbor? Hmm. Fuck it. Let's go with this top one here. Let's just see what the hell happens. The signatures I got? I know you plan to force them out with a construction noise. Harry. He shakes his head. By now, you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access make some people consider moving, well, let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout, where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable worker workers' palaces. So, the village is doomed, the lieutenant says grimly. You were there. You saw the place. A wasteland. There's nothing left, but mark my words, officers. He slams his fist on the table, causing some of the coffee to spill. We are going to reset it. Reset, he repeats. I have big plans for Martinez, and they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. What do you mean? Yeah, fucking commerce. I knew it. I fucking knew it. What do you mean? Harry, imagine a youth center supermarket church complex. Employing hundreds, now thousands of people, the coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low-income housing. He leans forward. 
Harry. This, Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago. For God's sake, it's time to move on. Good Lord. Youth supermarket church complex? Do you really expect me to believe that? Low income housing? If even part of this is true, then why not? And life. Nod. I knew you were a man of the people, Everard. Hmm. I don't think I believe this shit. Right? Hmm. Do you really expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. I got the center, I got room for a retail complex, and in four years I'll get the church too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. It cannot go on. Right. So Everett... Everett is technically on the left, right? It's just that he's not like... He's not actually a socialist or a socialist democrat or whatever, but... He's a liberal. He's an ultra-liberal, isn't he? Right? He just happens to be an ultra-liberal tilted toward the left. Is that the correct read on the situation? I think it is. It feels right right now. Continue. Empathy, easy success. There is true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things, and even a touch of pain. Pain threshold, easy success. The pain is true. He's seen the kids do worse than that. I knew you were up to something. Sounds like you got this. You can rely on my vote. I knew you were up to something. Damn right I'm up to something, Harry. The fist lands on the table again. I'm gonna make the working man as rich as Joyce Messier. That's my job. Just like yours is to keep the peace. But in the process, you're gonna drive people from their homes. I don't know. It seems kind of fucked. Maybe I'm reading into this wrong. Half-Light, easy success. A true flash of anger in him as he thinks of her. Hmm. I mean, she is awful, I agree. And these are good ideals, but I don't think the right way to go about it is by forcing them out of their, their places if they don't want to leave. Right? I feel like the appropriate way to do that is if you were going to guarantee housing for them, you would say such. And what about the people who don't have enough money to live in that low-income housing? Right? Because certainly there's people there who, like, aren't making fucking jack shit. Yeah, I don't know. Who killed the hangman? No idea. Could have been his own mother, for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him a big fat kiss from Everett Claire. Couldn't have done it without him. How do you know it's a guy? 5 XP. I don't. I told you it could have been his own mother. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the Union. Maybe it was some mob, or maybe he killed himself because he was a closet socialist. Truth is, I simply don't know. How many of you guys are there in the Union? Hmm. I don't know, it's just so hard for me to get a read on Everard, right? If he's true to his word, or if he's actually, like, lying through his teeth. It's so fucking hard for me to tell. But on the bright side, is the idea with the forged signatures is that they're like a fucking ace in the hole, right? If the people, if the innocent people living down there by the fishing village are okay with the agreement that he gives them, right? Then it'll go off with a, without a hitch. But if they hate it, they can just bring up, I didn't sign this shit, and then it comes into question, and then, like I said, it puts the ball in their court. So long as they're continually okay with whatever it has to is doing, then it'll, his plan will go through, right? But if any at any point along the way the people in the fishing village are not okay with what he's doing, then they have the power, right? That seems so much better. Is that I think that's that's my read on the situation. Okay, and I I don't need, <laughs> what's wild is that I'm like. 95% sure none of this is going to come up in this game, right? Unless there is some wild, like, end game, like, time flash forward. Either cinematic or, like, through some weird shit with the pale. I don't know. Right? None of this will come up. 
but just hypothetically thinking of this in world and justifying our decisions, right? Is what we're doing here. Anyway, how many of you guys are there in the union? 2,372, he replies like a whip. Plus, yours truly, of course. How are you going to fund your new independent harbor? Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? Am I going to replace all the contracts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients who will ditch us? Harry, we've thought of everything. Everything? We've been running back-channel negotiations with all the major clients. I think the company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martinez and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping the, those containers double time. You'll be surprised how fast things go on without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold, exotic new revenue streams. Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking. Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsuragi. They're a perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samaran Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. 5 XP. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. Electrochemistry medium success. Wow! A neurochemical psychoactive labor uprising slash hostile takeover. That's just the, t the top of the iceberg though, isn't it? God, that sounds shady. Digging it, Everett. I have to say, I'm digging this part. Hmm. It does sound pretty fucking shady, doesn't it? Just as we've said with everything, right? Huh. Like, it sounds like he should be aligned with us, but everything he says seems so, like, fucking off-kilter, right? <laughs> hmm. I want to, I'm down for either one or two here. That's just the top of the iceberg. Or, God, that sounds shady. That's just the top of the iceberg, though, isn't it? The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad. He makes air quotes. As bad optics may be illegal in some countries. The Debadiers Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. We're going to transport the living daylights out of the, those materials, Harry. He slams his fist on the desk once more. So your sick kid can get his benefit, and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off of Risperzol. Or Risperizol. And the kids on the street can get speed in Pyrholodon? I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. He smiles. Hmm continue. He smiles. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share, and I'd keep that stuff far away from Martinez. Huh. Because I'm... Like, my, my stance on drugs is that I'm fine with like conscientious conscientious bleh. I'm fine with um with responsible adults making the decision to do drugs if they so do wish right within a controlled environment as long as, as, long as they're not hurting people right but is that really a guarantee that you can make in this situation I don't know cause it getting into the hands of kids is fucked right I don't know is Ruby helping you secure this fantastic share? Drugs are a no-go for me. I'll report this. I have to admit that's a well-put-together plan, and far removed from you. Interesting stuff. I just want to solve this murder, okay? Makes sense to regulate the drug trade like this. Keeps it out of more dangerous hands. Yeah, like, I do think... I do think regulating drug trade is the right idea here, but I don't... I don't know. It's a lot of, a lot of it relies on proper execution of the plan, and I don't know if that's doable. Because already, case in point with the Hardy Boys, 
they're attempting to do drug trade, regulated drug trade. But case in point, fucking Kuno has done shitloads of fucking drugs. So in practice, it hasn't been working out entirely for everyone, right? Though, of course, we've seen plenty of kids who haven't, but, right? I don't know. Is Ruby helping you secure this fantastic share? You should definitely bring up Ruby. Harry, if I was supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. The lieutenant nods slowly. Understood. Huh. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. But also another question is, if we look at a grander scale of this situation, this would happen anyway, right? This drug trade shit is happening would happen anyway, and kids would still get their hands on drugs in fucked up ways, right? Huh. I don't know. It's such a difficult decision for me. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Definitely give me your input, channel viewer, if you have any any takes on this, because I'm, I'm quite unsure. Like, I know where I stand on stuff, but like I said, so much of it just relies on execution, which right now, it seems like the execution is fallible. But that said, on the flip side of how things would alternatively turn out, the execution is also fallible, right? Kids would still get their hands on drugs. But I guess the question is, does this make it harder or easier? And I guess, I guess the answer is I don't fucking know. Right? I guess the answer is I'm just too fucking dumb to understand. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Ah. <sighs> Fuck it, let's go with this. Makes sense to regulate the drug trade like this. Keeps it out of more dangerous hands. Oh, Harry, you've misunderstood. I have no drugs in my hands. He raises both hands, palms open. It's all far removed from me, like some half-remembered dream. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbor's turnover. Just like the harbor is but a small part of Martinez. It would still be illegal. So is there a trade or isn't there? Go on, say nothing. So is there a trade or isn't there? Let's look at the big picture. Martinez as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. 5 XP. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth and everyone's going to pull their weight. Volition, medium success. Let's keep focusing on the drug trade. It was almost admitting to it. Hold on, I don't want to look at the big picture. I want to look at the drug trade you almost admitted to. Well, I mean, if it has the word incorporate in it, then I like it. I'm a money guy. That's very ambitious. I love what you're doing for the working man. I'm not feeling a whole lot of ravishall here. Not enough flags or kings. Honestly, it's not my place to judge or express an opinion. Hold on, I don't want to look at the big picture. I want to look at the drug trade you almost admitted to. Now, now, Harry, that's boring, he says. All right, it's gone. The hypothetical raw materials trade is off the table. It's such a small and insignificant slice of revenue, I'm cutting it. Boys, he looks around the container. Harry felt queasy about it. We're not doing it. Can we talk about my beautiful incorporated Marnays and its many-sided business ventures now? This is a bold new vision of incorporated socialism I'm offering. This bold new vision of incorporated socialism I'm offering? Hmm. All right, well, <laughs> I mean, are you really just going to get rid of the drug part just like that? 
<laughs> we're taking a lot of his we have to put a lot of trust in him here huh I mean if you are true to your word and so far empathy our empathy has said that yeah for the most part he's he really believes the things that he's saying right it's just that there's always this little weird catch right so much of it sounds great Except there's always this weird little catch, like, oh, the drug trade. Kids are going to get their hands on drugs. Oh, this amazing youth center. Oh, it might cause some people to be driven from their homes because of, like, potentially years of construction noise. I don't know. It's difficult. All right, let's go with this. That's very ambitious. I love what you're doing for the working man, right? If we are taking him at face value here, right off of this that he's really <laughs> not going to include that shit all right i love what you're doing thank you harry thank you he bows courteously in his chair you have no idea how much it means to me because in many ways you are the working man you've already done so much work oh look can i ask you about specific union members hmm and like i said with my biggest security, sense of security with the the youth center situation is that the ball is in the court of the people, right? Like, for all of his talk about this being like, oh, this is for the people, we're putting power back into the hands of the people. I totally agree with the sentiment, right? But also he's doing it in a way that may drive some of those people away from their homes, right? Who may not want to leave. But we have we have our own sneaky little catch in place to where... If he does decide to skis it up, they have they have countermeasures, right? Okay. Can I ask you about specific union members? God, I'm so glad we passed that check. We're way past specific union members now. This is the big time. His eyes are shining. We're talking about the future of Ravishaw here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He points to the door. He loves to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. All right, that's it for now. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debadeurs Union. Suddenly, there's a sadness in his tone. This, he points to you, then himself, has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together. But if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Hmm. All right. We can ask a few more questions about the harbor. Is there actually anything? No. All right. That's it for now. All right, Everett, I'm going to leave now, but we may talk again later. <laughs> I love that he gives the finger gun, though. All right. Yeah, definitely by far... Everard is like the most difficult character for me to get a read on, right? I don't know about anyone else who is watching or has played this game. But he's got to be the most difficult character for me to have like a solid read on. I don't know. And I think that's 100% intentional, right? I feel like that is absolutely the intent. Because if this, if this game, if we we're to assume that this game has like a, a leftist socialist bent to it, then of course you would figure that you're, you're, such people would probably be your primary people playing the game, maybe. I don't know, maybe it's wrong to assume that, but either way, to have him be, like, the main character on the side, on that same side, is makes it very intriguing, right? All right. I suppose when next we come back, we'll check in with Leo, who may have new dialogue, and then... Jeez, what do we do next? Should we check in with the scab leader? Confront the pigs. Yeah. We still have to wait on that, don't we? Okay. Yeah, we'll check in with Leo, and then we'll check in with the scab leader. And then hopefully it will be karaoke time? Maybe? I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah. That may be it. Okay. Cool. Well, when next we come back, all of that shit. Until next time, please take care of each other.